Good morning, everyone. I am so delighted to be here to share this remarkable occasion with you. What a special time. In particular, I'm very humbled also that I will receive an honorary degree from Notre Dame tomorrow, and I particularly want to thank the president of Notre Dame, Father Jenkins, and whoever contributed to my selection. I can affirm that I'm going to uh, commit myself to make sure that I uh, continue to deserve this recognition, this honor. And I want to uh, say that it's great to share this honor with the newest alumni who are sitting in front of me today, so congratulations. Isaac Newton is perhaps regarded as the most influential scientist that ever lived. And interestingly, he said he could not have done what he did without having those who went before him. So my goal today in my presentation is to provide a foundation for all of you. I know all of you have the potential to do great work and accomplish great things. So I want to share some of my thoughts to send you on your way. When my career started, it started in very much the same way that your career will, will with a solid graduate education in the field that you selected. Honestly, I had little idea what my future would hold for me, but believed that life would present me with opportunities and as long as I worked hard and had a positive attitude, I would move forward. My first job immediately after graduation with a PhD was with a large chemical company, which fit because I was an organic chemist. But after a year, I had an opportunity, and remember that word, opportunity, is going to keep showing up as I talk, to conduct postdoctoral research in a very well-regarded, one of the major electrochemistry research um, groups in the United States. I thought at that time that learning more about a field a little bit different from mine could uh, really broaden my background and be quite interesting. That led to a second opportunity in electrochemistry, which I also pursued. Because of my knowledge in organic chemistry and electrochemistry, I was recruited, which at that time was a small family-owned business founded by Mr. Wilson Great Badge. Mr. Great Badge invented the circuitry for the pacemaker, and he licensed that to a major manufacturing company. The company he started was to make batteries, because he recognized that if devices are going to be placed inside people, they need very special batteries. So the company manufactured implantable batteries for pacemakers. And I was one of the earlier PhD um, employees that joined the company. I had no previous experience in the science of batteries specifically, but I was thrilled to be part of a company that was dedicated to such an important enterprise and have the opportunity to contribute to the quality of life and extending life of people. When I first started, I had no idea, again, what research would involve and how my life would unfold. And I can tell you, through my graduate training, I had not planned on pursuing research in a medical field. But here I was. I had the opportunity to make a contribution. And I would face that challenge like I faced every other one with optimism, hard work, and determination. My first project that I was assigned was the development of the battery to power the implantable cardiac defibrillator. So you're familiar with those devices today, the external ones, the paddles that you put on somebody's chest and apply a big zap, you know, in case of a heart attack and bring the person back to life. The implantable device is really marvelous. It's permanently implanted in somebody's chest, so wherever they're going, this device is continually monitoring their heart, and if they go into a form of heart attack, it saves their life. The device had been demonstrated, and at that time, the battery lasted about one year. And we knew 
that for clinical viability, it wasn't reasonable to do surgery on patients every year. So we targeted five years of life with enough power to defibrillate a patient, small enough to be implantable, and do no harm to the patient. So imagine a battery only a little bit bigger than your cell phone battery that lasts five years and never is recharged. So that's the challenge that was facing us. At the company, at that time, the experience we had with medical batteries, like I said, was um, implantable pacemaker batteries. So I calculated. I said, OK, one therapy event for a pacemaker compared to one therapy event for a defibrillator. How different are they, really? Well, the answer is a million times difference in energy, a million. So it's easy to understand that the solution was not a million pacemaker batteries, but we needed a whole new type of battery. And that's what we did. We set off to pursue the project to deliver a battery with an unheard of amount of energy for an implantable device that could do this safely, reliably, um, do no harm to the patient, and last five years. I can tell you that there are events perhaps that have already happened in your life, but certainly will in the future, that have such an impact on you that it's almost like having a picture in your mind that you can recall instantaneously. I still remember standing in the laboratory at my company. I was wearing a blue lab coat, gloves, lab glasses. And the word came through of the first human implant of the battery that we had made. And I recognized at that moment that, wow, this is real. This is really happening. This is no longer a lab experiment. This is going to impact people. The first implant was in Australia. On to the next challenge. We needed to develop a battery that could be approved by the FDA, allow implants in the United States. So we pursued that, moved forward, faced each challenge, um, addressed it as best as we could, and kept going. The battery enabled the widespread use of defibrillators. Without the battery, I think it would have only been used in a very limited uh, circumstances. The device is so successful and so effective that clinical trials were halted because the NIH could not justify um, not denying the device to a patient who could benefit from it. And now, the, more than 20 years later, I'm happy to report that that battery that we developed is still being used. It dominates the market and continues to save lives. So in 2004, I was inducted into the National Academy of Engineering for taking the fundamental chemistry that we developed, turning it into a practical product, and allowing a company to turn from a privately owned business to a company traded on the New York Stock Exchange. And as you heard earlier in 2009, I was invited to the White House and honored by President Barack Obama with the National Medal of Technology and Innovation. Candidly, I never envisioned that this would happen. I knew that what we were doing was important, but I can tell you I was not pursuing our goals to glorify myself. I was doing it because I was passionate about it and I felt it was important. On a bit of a personal note, I think that there are still very few women who have been recognized in STEM fields um, with the level of recognition that I've benefited from. So I'm honored if I can serve as a role model and inspiration to other women who want to pursue invention. So after a wonderful career in industry, I was invited to join a university as a professor. And I made the decision to take on that new challenge because as exciting and great as my career in industry was, I was also a little bit uh, limited scientifically because there are a lot of forces, sales, marketing, profits, management changes, et cetera. So at a university, um, I can pursue uh, fundamental questions and apply them to the fields that make sense. You know, maybe medical batteries, batteries for electric cars, you know, ultimately maybe batteries that match up with uh, solar cells. And even more importantly, 
while the, the battery that we developed influenced so many people, most of those people I never got to meet. Now as a professor, I meet students directly and can help guide them and shape their education, uh, both in fundamental science and academics, expose them to national laboratories, um, inform them of questions that are important to companies if that's a direction they want to go. So students can understand all of these dynamics without having to work there first. So it's been extremely rewarding. So what piece of advice do I have for all of you? My piece of advice is very important. Love what you do. I say that deliberately. Sometimes the advice that I've heard is do what you love. But that's really very different. And I think what really got me thinking about this was hearing students say sometimes, you know, I'm good at some things, but I don't really like those. The things that I like, I'm not good at. I think that if you're good at something, you should take pride in it. You should recognize that you were given an ability it's a sign you are blessed. It's your responsibility to make maximum advantage and take maximum benefits of the abilities and the talents that you have to make the world a better place. Use your abilities to do good. That means that you will love what you do. If you only pursue what you love, you're limited by your knowledge base at the time. You can only love what you already know. But if you love what you do, you can continue to grow, evolve, adapt as your knowledge and experience go, grows and continue to evolve and develop. Take pride in, your, in yourself. Respect the talents that you were given. It's your responsibility to develop them and then use them for the good of others. So that is the goal that I'd like to leave with you today. Do the best you can with the abilities that you have. Enjoy every minute of the journey. The journey is important as well. And by all means, love what you do. Thank you. <laughs>